Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am delighted to be joined by Amanda Holmes, who's in lovely Florida today. How are you doing, Amanda? Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> and Amanda is the CEO of Chet Holmes International, um, very well known. Uh, if you haven't uh, heard about them before, um, Amanda, just want to give a couple of minutes about what Chet Holmes is all about? Yes, it was started by my father 30 years ago, and we basically have 12 core competencies for doubling sales, and based on our New York Times bestseller, The Ultimate Sales Machine, we've assisted over 200,000 businesses worldwide in every industry you could think of, and that's kind of what we do. Yeah, and Amanda, you became CEO of the company at quite a young age, correct? Yeah, I did. Yeah. So uh, and and it's uh, and has continued the success of it. So what we wanted to talk today about is the fastest least expensive way to double your sales and like who doesn't want to do that, okay? So um, Amanda, when when you say to somebody, I know the fastest least expensive way to double your sales, um what reaction do you first get and how do you show them that this is actually possible? Uh, usually people are pretty excited about that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and another part that I'll add to it is it really doesn't take a lot of wallet power. What it takes is horsepower. Mm -hmm. So that we take pride in the fact that our methodology is really about one thing and it's called pig-headed discipline and determination. And for every salesperson on this listening to this knows what that means because 44% of businesses or I'm sorry, 44% of salespeople usually stop if they get one no. 44%. And yet wow. studies show that it takes roughly around 8 to 9 no's before you get a yes. So uh, that's the difference between that success and failure. But I can I can dive right into. Well, just what just on that for a moment though, because it is it is something. It's like it is amazing. Like this, you can tell people this over and over again about you know the statistics around eight eight touches or eight no's before you get to a yes or sometimes more, and yet um, and yet people will quit after one or two. Um, so it's it's kind of funny that I mean it's still the same. And with all this kind of talk around inbound marketing and all. Of that, you, it's almost like some people have gotten an excuse and they say, Oh, well, you know, eight touches doesn't work anymore. I just sit back and I wait for people to come to me, which clearly doesn't work. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right. So let's dive a little deeper into into what are some of the things you can do? I mean, I love the idea of pig headedness, um, you know, being Irish, that's, um, you know, that's a national trait. So it's uh, we got a head start on that one. <laughs> really? I didn't I wasn't aware. <laughs> Um, so we call it the best buyer strategy and everybody that's listening or watching can write this down, the best buyer strategy. And what we've come to find, and this was developed by my father who won 60 of the fortune 500 as clients and managed to double the sales of nine different divisions for a billionaire by the name of Charlie Munger. And the way that he was able to do that is this exact procedure for figuring out how to have, um, uh, success in sales on a repeatable basis. So he realized he had gotten, I'll take it back to a bit of history mm -hmm. here, but he had gotten a list of 2000 different businesses and said, okay, call all these 2000 different businesses to try and sell, uh, advertising. So he looked over at a senior person that was only managing about five accounts and she didn't have to make any sales calls. And he said, you know, why do you only manage five accounts and everyone else manages all these others? And he said, and she said, well, because they're the biggest accounts possible. So then he looked at that 2,000 and he said, okay, of those 2,000, who are the biggest ones? And it turned out that 95% of the advertising was bought by only 167 of those 2,000. Mm -hmm. So instead of, like all of us, right, we go out and we market to everyone out there, who can I call? Instead, he said, okay, I'm going to do a very specific campaign to just the dream 100. Who are those dream 100? They buy from you. They buy the most from you. They buy the most often from you. They're usually what we find in businesses with our clients is they're usually about 20% of the clientele that produce 80% of the revenue. So you look at who are those people that are great clients that, you know, love what you do, that work really well together. And then you craft a specific campaign to those people. But I'll tell you right now that it's not something that you're going to get after one phone call. If you do, tell me about it. I'd love to tell your story and I'll send it out to everybody. <laughs> but the majority of the time, 
it takes pig-headed discipline and determination. Like for instance, I have a client that started in real estate five months ago and said, I'd like to jump into real estate. And normally I only work with our much bigger clients, but I said, you know, this guy has some gusto. I'm going to take him on as a client. And uh, we ended up, I just got off the phone with him actually. He is closing 24 million in real estate deals after five months and Mm. wasn't in the industry at all. And Mm. what we did, was a dream 100 strategy and we utilized a thing that we call education based marketing to Im- to deploy it it's all about that marketing messaging I, we're not going to cover that today <laughs> but dream 100 is the way to double that sales so but i will leave it with a but it you need to have the tenacity to be able to go after them for five months for six months for 11 months where you're calling them. So usually what what we see is we're sending out mailers twice a month. Mm -hmm. So we're doing lumpy mail, but hey, it works if you do it right. Uh, We're still calling. So maybe you 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 mail out on every every other Wednesday and then you call them on every other Friday and then you email them on Sunday nights. And then on Tuesday, you're sending them a tweet on Wednesday. You're sending them a LinkedIn update and you just become in their face, in their space, in their place. They can't help but respond back to you. And maybe at first it's a, would you just get away? (laughs) But no, you don't understand. What I'm trying to give you is this 15 minute powerful presentation on everything you need to know to cut your whatever insert benefit here. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, there's a few things um, I just want to pick up on here. Um, and that is um, so when you, when you uh, when you talk about and advocate, you know, focus and finding you know the right ones and focusing on them for a long time, uh, that goes against a little bit of the comfort zone that people have in volume, right? Yeah, it's much you know it feels better to be targeting thousands of people at once rather than focusing on a certain amount. It feels and it feels better even if you don't land those deals, it still feels better because you feel like you have a lot in your pipeline as opposed to just focusing on a, on a small number. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it can feel against the grain, but if you think about it and usually companies know this where they think about, okay, my biggest client, what was that client? Well, you know, they usually generate me a hundred thousand dollars, whereas a typical client maybe costs, maybe would make me five grand or six grand. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. to actually come up with a process for winning hundred thousand dollar clients, and maybe it's not something that you do as a full time job, right? Maybe it's um, four hours a week or even two hours a week that you're spending on this dream 100 concept to really get those big ones. And if you can institutionalize, so to get the big ones, takes real skill, right? So what are your phone calling skills? What are your voicemail skills? You know, do you have your scripts? Do you uh, you have all of your scripts for all of your objections? Do you have your LinkedIn um, request for and to be contacted Mm -hmm. LinkedIn, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, Do you have your uh, lumpy mail? Is it something interesting and intriguing? You know, it it does take a certain pizzazz, but... (laughs) Either way, if you have reached out to these people 35 touches, they're going to have to get on the phone. This is how my father got 60 of the Fortune 500 as clients, right? And we've institutionalized it. That's why we have 200,000 businesses worldwide that say, oh, yes, th- that strategy really works. Yeah, and I think it's, uh, again, I mean, you're, uh, you're, you're, you're touching on something here that I think is, is critically important to people, especially nowadays, because I feel that we live in this kind of shortcut culture I keep harping on about is where we're constantly, you know, we're constantly bombarded with this idea that there's a shortcut or there's a silver bullet or there's a new, hey, have you seen this new app that just came out that can like get a, get all your sales done for you while you're, you know, sitting by the pool drinking beer or something? And and people love to latch on to this. But what you're talking about here is all of these things. It's a lot of different types of activities done in a systematic fashion, right? Yeah, we call it stacked marketing. So if you can come at them, and the key to making this work more efficiently and easily is to have the same message throughout all of your marketing mediums and all of your touch points. So the message that I'm giving in this direct mail that I've written is the same that I'm giving in LinkedIn, is the same that I'm leaving on the voicemail, is the same that I've tweeted over on Twitter. So it's not like you're reinventing the wheel. You've actually created one piece of centralized story, what we call a core story. Mm -hmm. When you create 
that core story, then you just market it out to all the different mediums. So it makes everything a lot easier, especially if you're running a sales team, if you have multiple people. A lot of the time what we see is maybe 10% of those sales teams are producing at a rapidly higher rate than 90% of the rest. I just got off the phone with somebody. He produces 3 million uh, in their rev recurring revenue um, model and 19 other sales reps produce the, the additional 2 million that they make a year. Right. So <laughs> you look at that and you're like, okay, what's that one guy have that the rest don't? And it's really, and we're actually working together right now to create that core story for them so that everybody's singing the same tune, so that every sales rep has every tool they need to be able to go out and say the right things and deliver it in a way that's meaningful and exciting and creates trust, rapport, res respect, right? And and here's an interesting thing because everything you're talking about obviously is, is uh, well-defined, repeatable processes, right? And... Traditionally, in sales, there's a lot of people who've sort of go, oh, no, process, that belongs to other people. That, that, that belongs to the accountancy and the other groups. You know, sales is an art form. Uh, but the reality is the, the highest performing sales organizations and salespeople follow repeatable, defined processes, even down to exactly what to do in each stage of their process, right? Yeah. Oh, 100%. 92% of businesses don't have a sales process. Mm -hmm. And I, it's an even crazier percentage. I think it's like something like 20% of the jobs in the United States are all sales jobs. Mm -hmm. And yet you can't go, there's, it's like point, oh man, it's below 10% of the universities in America that actually can provide sales as a, tr as a college mm -hmm. degree or minor or something. So there isn't any sales training, and yet majority of our whole ecosystem of small to medium-sized businesses, uh, you know, we employ the most amount of people compared to the Fortune 500s, and yet nobody is trained on this. It's yeah. like, go out there, good luck, here's some leads, and, uh, you know, yeah. have a great but yeah, we're, we're actually uh, just interested you say that we're actually working with DePaul University and a number of other universities right now who actually do have undergrad sales programs right now. Um, but they're in the minority. But the amazing thing is like every college practically has a marketing program. But the major when marketing people graduate, what is overwhelmingly their first job? It's not marketing. It's sales. <laughs> I love that. That's hysterical. <laughs> so how do you help people get to embrace the idea that process really works for sales and that is, you know, and they should be looking at their job in a much more organized, process oriented fashion and not so much winging it, you know, and putting aside yeah. all that, you know, mythology around, you know, the fact that it's an art and it's there isn't an actual kind of science or process behind it? That's so funny. Well, we have our New York Times bestselling book, Ultimate Sales Machine, that helps people. And it's it's based with so many great stories of really amazing growth. I mean, we just have some of my stories I can't tell anymore because people don't believe them. They're so <laughs> Amazing. Like one, uh, I used to tell about a company in Dubai that increased their sales from 17 million a year to 600 million in one year based on our methodology. And people just go, I uh, can't, <laughs> cannot register, right? So we have these amazing stories. Um, but I think what it really takes is having that extra person outside of you to look and give you assistance along that path. Because it was, if it's just left up to your own device, it's really difficult to come up with that procedure, come up with what's the next step, what's mm -hmm. going to take the next step. You know, I think of like every um, master of any craft, be it uh, we look at sports stars or, you know, Tiger Woods had six different assistants to figure out how to play golf. And he's the best in the world and he has six people. Mm -hmm him on how to do that. So in my experience, I, I think back to this one that just won, uh, just closed 24 million. And I think, man, in month three, he would have been out. I know he would have. He was frustrated by month four. He's like, you've got to be kidding me, Amanda. Like enough already. I'm like, it's working. Just keep going, you know? <laughs> and, it, you know, we trained forever on what his phone scripting tonality was, because as we know, statistically, right, if it, tonality in the first five seconds can make the difference between them hanging up on you or not. Mm -hmm. And it makes a huge 
difference. I don't have this data off, off the top of my head, but um, I would really say having that somebody to look up to, to assist you, be it a coach, be it a mentor, be it, you know, if it's the VP of sales, if you're somebody that's working amongst a company, uh, having that person to elevate your game. If you were playing a sport, you do the same thing, right? For if sure. you're learning craft, you find that person that's going to assist to elevate your game much higher. Yeah, no, it, it, it always it, it always kind of interests me that uh, I guarantee you that most people, um, you know, they probably have a hobby probably um practice that a lot probably have a coach maybe take lessons whatever but for the thing that actually puts bread on their table they don't <laughs> they, and and i think that that's an that that's an excellent point here that you know you should be looking you should be looking for somebody to help you from that in, uh, outside input here's another interesting thing though i think the challenge for sales people is getting even greater now because um, once upon a time it was all about developing face-to-face -face skills, right? I mean, that was, it was a key element, you know, go and meet this. Now we're doing so much virtual, there's so much virtual selling going on where you're never, it's sometimes never actually meeting the person in real life. So that, so that, in, that um, adds in another layer of complexity is how you can build some of those relationships and watch how do you come across in a virtual setting like this, for instance, as opposed to, you know, sitting across the table. Yeah, well, I saw a stat yesterday that 92% of client interactions are still happening over the phone. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. phone skill is important, but we all know the value of meeting somebody in person, right? Sure. I think sure. that we're seeing this generation of millennials <laughs> 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 that uh, that do want to have that step removed. You know, I want to be behind a computer screen. And yet we're also seeing this surge of people saying, okay, I feel so alone. How do I become part of a community? So there's this strange back and forth. Um, but when you do make that connection in person, it can mean something much more substantial. And I have been teaching this actually as a strategy for Dream 100 that, you know, when I meet one of my dream 100 at an event and then I swap information socially, you know, so that maybe it's Instagram or it's Facebook. Um, and then we keep in contact that way. Wow. What a magnificent way to be able to stay connected with all of your potential buyers. Right. Mm. It it's, I, I think that it really makes a difference if you can mix the two. It's the same thing with automation today as well. You know, if you just want to become a bot, that's your choice. That's fine. But oh my gosh, if you combine the two together, you become unstoppable. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's, that's an interesting point as well, because there is a, you know, there, there is a temptation to move more and more towards automation. And that's fine. And, uh, you know, obviously, we're a CRM company, and we believe in automation, but it has to be the human element has to be there at the right moments, you know, and then the combination of the two is where the power comes. It's not a replacement. It's not an either or. Yes. I would agree. <laughs> so um, before we finish, what, what's one last piece of advice that you would give to people to start doing differently today? My biggest piece of advice that I live and I really had been quiet about preaching it or saying it to people, but I've noticed that the greatest successes come when there's an alignment with being in a place of service. I think that we're in an environment today where there's just so many negative things happening. I just looked at, you know, the the death rate over the last two years has actually increased and it's because of mass shootings and suicides. So I look at that and I go, why are people so disconnected? And it's really because we've made it so much about ourselves. You know, how many likes do I get? How many shares do I get? You know, what makes me look like I'm having a great time even though I'm not? So I think what really needs to come full circle, which um, I really have studied very hardcore and I have a lot to learn in it, but if you can come from a place of service, you will feel more energized, more passionate, more willing to do that PhD, pig-headed discipline, to get what you want done because you're in alignment with something that feels uplifting. And, uh, you know, I do a lot of work in a nonprofit called Divine Bliss International, and we're actually working right now to procure 400 acres in Virginia to teach people how to come back into balance with themselves. Because to me, it's 
abundance is something that's more than just the bank account, right? Mm -hmm. It's my guru would say it's it's a feeling of feeling complete. So I, when I look at the sales reps and who are sales reps that I consider to be rich and abundant and successful, it's those that go to work every day saying, I'm going to truly serve the person on the other side of that phone, on the other side of that table. So if you can come from a place of service and really think, how can I uplift the people around me? That will uplift you. Yeah. And no, I, I think that's a fantastic point um, to end on. I couldn't agree more. I think there's so much negativity flowing out there. Um, I've recently, um, through some other interviews I've done, you know, been starting to advise people is be careful of how you start your day. Right. I mean, you mentioned social media. Right. Is that the best way to start your day? Because if you see a snapshot of somebody who looks like they're having a phenomenal time and you're not feeling great about yourself, is that going to make you feel good? And um, sometimes the news, to be honest, you can get through a day without knowing what's going on in the world. If something catastrophic is happening in your neighborhood, somebody probably tell you. Um, so you can you. So being careful about what inputs you take into yourself that help set you up for for being, you know, for being positive and to be able to serve. Huge. I mean, I saw another stat that said that we spend an average of 11 hours a day in a on a digital advice, whether device, whether that's on a phone or in front of a computer. And computers and phones do not give you any energy. They right. really don't. Mm -hmm. They most suck energy from you. So I I believe in that because I live in a healing center <laughs> and my in our backyard is a completely organic natural garden. And I actually live and sustain by what we grow in the backyard because when I'm in front of a plant and I'm assisting it to grow, I feel way more uplifted. I feel um, uh, it gives me energy. I just feel such a beautiful flow happening as opposed to always being in front of a computer or a uh, device. Yeah. Um, so I think that's a great place to end because I think a good piece of advice for people is, you know, you need something to recharge because these devices aren't recharging you. So, so Amanda, this has been fascinating. Thank you for taking time out to talk to us today. Amanda Holmes, the Chat Holmes International. Um, before we go, do you want to just tell people a little bit more about how they can find out more about uh, your organization and get in contact with you? Yeah, they could go to chetholmes.com or ultimatesalesmachine.com and there's a little three video series on the three breakthroughs to double your sales um, in one hour a week. So it's a great uh, video series. I'm teaching uh, the best buyer strategy more in depth, how you do that on social. We go into how to nine times every move you make uh, through your messaging. We also go into the qualities and traits of superstar salespeople, which I'm sure every salesperson would want to know. <laughs> So it's a great video series we do it for free just to give back to everybody. So I would recommend that or you can find us on social. Follow us there on Facebook or Instagram. Excellent. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine Pipeline or CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon.